Hi everyone, today I'll be answering questions I received from my viewers about some of the features on the new Olympus OM-1. So I went out to Great Falls National Park to capture these images and I'll be posting them on my Flickr page so you can see them in full resolution. I'll have the links below for that as well as links so you can support the channel through PayPal and or Amazon. Any donations are greatly appreciated. All right, let's see. It's a lot of questions here on live ND, comparing it with real ND filters. Uh, so let's just do an ND shot first. Here I'm setting up the uh, live ND settings. We're going to use the highest number ND64 because it's midday. And um, I want to make sure my EV is at zero, as you can see in the bottom right. Steady the camera, one second. And we're done. Another question is, how does the Live ND compare against a real ND filter? And does Live ND work well with a polarizer filter? And I did bring that, so let's get started. Now I'll be using a five stop variable ND filter. I'm gonna dial this into five stops. This is the KNF Nano X. Uh, it's not an expensive filter, but it's not the cheapest one either. It does a good job. And I'll have links down below to everything I'll be using today. Now on the left side, I have the uh, electronic Live ND on the OM-1 and on the right side, I have the real five stop ND filter and there's really virtually no difference. I did do a white balance adjustment because there is a slight color cast on the variable ND filter that I adjusted for. Uh, and also the light may have changed a little bit in the in between shots, but for the most part, they're virtually identical. It's really only when you pixel peep at hundred percent or 200% that you might notice that the details are just a little bit better on the electronic live ND. Uh, and that's because uh, for the same reason we got a slight color cast uh, when you ever ever time you know anytime you're putting glass in front of your lens it may degrade the quality uh, you know a higher quality ND filter may perform better but generally speaking um, you're going to get better image quality from the live ND now that said there are times when you do want to use a real nd filter uh, especially for video and there there may be some other cases in uh, still photography but um, for general photography like i do i would be happy with either one of these images but having a live nd gives you the advantage of not having to bring an extra filter and getting a little better quality both in sharpness and in color now, the second part of that question was, does Live ND work well with polarizer filters? And the short answer is yes, it works great, just like it did with the five stop variable ND filter I used. And uh, generally, polarizer filters are to reduce haze so you get richer, bluer skies, uh, reduce reflections on leaves and grass and glass surfaces uh, in the water. And, uh, you know, in this image, you can definitely see the skies are definitely richer. And there's slightly less haze, maybe all the way in the background. Although, um, it's very hard to tell. And then in terms of details overall, I'm not really seeing any difference here or any effect on the image quality itself. So, uh, I think if you want to use a polarizer with your live ND, you won't have any issues at all. I got another question about the handheld high-res shot mode or HHHR and compare that between the OM-1 and the M1 Mark III in terms of, you know, how much can we raise the shadows or pull the highlights? You know, are there any image quality differences in sharpness or any artifacts, things like that? So uh, what I did was I went out and uh, did a bracketed shot plus or minus two EV. And I'm going to take these into Lightroom and then start pushing and pulling the highlights and shadows and see if there's really any difference, if there's any artifacts and things like that. So let's let's go into Lightroom and take a look. All right, let's just start with the normal exposure at zero EV. We have the M1 Mark III on the left and the OM-1 on the right. And these are both handheld high-res shots at 50 megapixels. And as you can see, I think the detail on both are equivalent. Um, both did a very, very good job. Now, what I did notice when I started looking around the image, I noticed right here, there's a little bit of a blotch here. 
And if we look in some of the highlight areas where the water kind of comes together, there's definitely more, more uh, blotching going on in here. And also down in here on this side. Um, you can just see that I think the OM1 is doing a better job with these very, very minor artifacts. Nothing major, but just time to time, the EM1 will create these little white blotches in the highlights. And I didn't see anything wrong in the shadows here at all. These both look really good. Now here's the uh, EM1 Mark III underexposed by two stops and then brought back in post-processing. And if we punch in, um, I think it did an excellent job at bringing the shadow areas up, especially down in here. You can see this was almost completely black, but I was able to recover the details nicely here in the shadows. Now let's compare this to the OM1. All right, so we have the EM1 here, and let's see if we have any artifacts at all. And actually, I did find this one pretty quickly right here. But when I looked all around on the OM1, I could not find any artifacts like that at all. Uh, we're getting kind of the same amount of speckling on both, maybe a little bit less here on the OM1. But that's a little bit of a random thing here. And when we look in the shadow areas, I think both did a good job. But you can definitely see there's a color difference. And again, I, I white balance these to be exactly the same. And yet, I'm getting this very, very subtle difference. This is a little bit more magenta versus this is a little more yellow, right? But when we get into brighter areas, uh, they both look really good, but the saturation here maybe is just a hair more uh, color. And again, let's check this one highlight area. Yeah, I'm not really seeing the same artifacting that I did when the shot was overexposed by two stops. So really, I think they both did a fine job uh, when you underexpose by two stops. I don't think one is going to do a better job than the other. The only clear difference is that the new sensor in the OM1 does have a slight uh, magenta tint to it over the EM1. Okay, now this shot was overexposed by two stops here on the left, and then on the right is the process image where I pulled it back two stops on the exposure, then I pulled the highlights down 100%. And then I add a little bit more processing here to clean up and add some color back in. And if we punch in, you can see that I think it did a good job at pulling the highlights back without too much trouble. However, we are seeing a little bit of artifacting here in the water. And we'll see more of that when I do a direct comparison with the OM-1. Here I have the OM-1 now on the right. And I did the same exact processing to both. And you can see the OM1 also did a very good job at uh, pulling the highlights in. But I feel like there's a tad more color on the OM1. The, the color here is just a little bit richer on the right. And a little tiny bit maybe better contrast. But it's very, very subtle. But again, in the highlight areas, you can see the EM1 uh, is having the same kind of blotchiness problem. Whereas on the OM1, it's much, much smoother. I really don't see any blotchiness or any artifacts at all. Let's look at this waterfall where I was having a trouble spot here. And if you look closely, you can see kind of a grid pattern in the highlight areas here uh, that I'm not seeing at all over here on the OM1. And again, there's no blotchiness here that I think, you know, would have been duplicated on the OM1 if it's on the EM1, but it wasn't. And again, right in here, I'm seeing sort of a, a grid pattern on the highlights, whereas it's not present at all 
anywhere on the OM-1. Ignore this purple fringing, that's a lens uh, issue. Uh, and back here, looking good. But right here you can see some blotchiness again. So maybe it was able to retain the highlights slightly better. I, I, I would say probably not, but if it did, even so, the highlights here are getting sort of a grid pattern in the um, in the highlights. If I magnify that, maybe you can see it a little better. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is something I've never done before, and that's create a video from a sequence of raw images. Now, in theory, right, 4K video is only 8 megapixels. A raw image from the OM-1 is 20 megapixels. So now you can create... I don't know, 5.7K, 7K, whatever that works out to be. I don't know how that math works. But you can create a much higher resolution video by just capturing raw images rather than capturing, uh, doing it in video directly. Uh, but there's a catch, right? There always is. The buffer on the OM-1 is only 90 frames. So you can only really get three and a half second clips when you're doing it at 120 frames per second. And uh, I guess that can be useful for something. I don't know, but uh, I gave it a shot and this is what I came up with. So let's take a look. 5.2K, 120 FPS. Wow. support the channel i really appreciate it if you like these kind of videos consider subscribing hit the like button but either way thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you again soon